It's my pleasure and honor to speak at this venerable institution. Now I'm going to talk about free bank. Well, this is maybe this institution is new, but certainly it has already a respectable name in the mathematical world. Um, I'll be talking about free bank lattices. So this is very much a work in progress, and it's a work in progress with my excellent collaborators, Mitchell Taylor from Berkeley. Pedro Tredesetti, who is actually one of the organizers here, and Vladimir Troitsky from the University of Alberta, Canada. So if you notice any mistakes in the talk, you know whom to blame. And uh, <laughs> uh, let me see. So first of all, uh, I want to maybe explain what are those three objects and why we are interested in them and um, why, why should we study them. So as to why uh, I can only defer to the magisterial authority of the author of Don Quixote. So this is what he said. <laughs> Unfortunately, I cannot, I cannot say it in the original Spanish, so it has to be in translation. And uh, as to how, as to how, well, we, I, I should say that the subject is very vast. Uh, uh, we don't know much, but we know quite a bit already. So I, I, I selected the topics uh, mostly in accordance with my own taste and with my own mathematical interests, which, uh, um, which come from my Banach spaces background. So I will try to emphasize connections to Banach spaces and also the uh, situations that we are in currently is uh, somewhat described by this miniature uh, illustrating the parable of a uh, blind man and the elephant. So I, I can maybe talk about uh, the, the tail of the elephant or the uh, trunk of the elephant, but uh, hopefully, hopefully from this description, you will get a, a good idea of what the, the whole uh, creature looks like. Uh, so anyway, what is what is what is freeness? What what is the definition? So you can uh, you can you can think of this in a fairly general framework. So let's say you have two categories: script K and script L. And let's say you have uh, some functor from one category to another. And uh, very often you can think of this as a forgetful functor. And in this way, this category K. Is, is, is called the re read category. Uh, and uh, let's say now we have an object L in, 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 this, in, this, in this category. Very well, once again, very roughly, you can think that we have more structure on K and less structure on L. So we have an object in the category with less structure. And then a free object over this E is a pair. So um, uh, consisting of, of an object X in, in the richer category in K and a map phi uh, from E to, um, e to, to this, uh, to, to e. so you can think of it's kind of a shade of X in the, in, the, in the L category. So the map is an L morphism and further for any map T from E, uh, from, any, from any Z in the richer category, and from any map T into, into square Z, uh, you can uh, find a unique uh, map, a unique T morphism, uh, T a unique K morphism rather T hat from X to Z so that, so that this diagram here commutes. And uh, by diagram chasing, you can um, uh, uh, show that if the free object exists, it is, un it is unique. Of course, the existence is not at all automatic, and uh, it uh, requires some uh, it, it requires some work to show its existence. Uh, be, and before talking about free Banach lattices, let me let me um, uh, maybe show you a few uh, settings where we actually are using free objects without maybe uh, thinking much about free. So one uh, is, let's say K is a category of all Hausdorff compact topological spaces, and L is a category of all topological spaces. And then the, the functor, which goes from K to L, is just the formal identity map. Uh, uh, so, the few, so let's say we have a, a topological space X, then it's uh, um, um, the corresponding free object 
is its tone check compactification. So this and, and this diagram illustrates the defining property of the stone check compactification that for any uh, continuous map from uh, T from S to uh, some Kausdorf compact K, we have we have an extension. Uh, another another situation is uh, well, uh, it's it looks a little bit artificial, but it actually it actually does come in in in, in function analysis. So let's say K script K is the category of all norm spaces with morphisms uh, being contractive linear operators. Uh, let's say first the script L is the category of sets, and uh, the square is a forgetful functor which takes a norm space into its unit ball. And then, uh, uh, so what, what should be the property of a free object? Well, um, we take a map from, uh, from, uh, from A to some bodic space, the or maybe to the unit ball of some bodic space Z. So basically, we have a a, uh, this map uh, just defines a collection of points in, in the unit ball. Um, and uh, we have to be able to extend it to a map from the free object to the Banach space, or sorry, not the Banach, but the norm space Z. And well, it turns out that the free object here is uh, the space L10. Uh, this is the space of all finitely uh, support, uh, for, finitely supported sequence, uh, sequences from A. So basically you have uh, uh, a sequence with only finitely many non-zero terms. You equip it with the L1 norm and then uh, any, uh, there is this natural extent, is natural embedding. Uh, um, and then any operate, any, any uh, map T from A to a norm space Z extends in a natural in a natural fashion here, um, uh, and um, another another um, uh, setting which which has been more uh, uh, which has been attracting more interest lately is that once again let's say K is a category well let's say K is a category of conic spaces and morphism once again are linear con uh, linear contractions. Uh, and let's say script L is a category uh, of metric spaces with a, a special point uh, selected in them, which we call zero. And morphisms will be the uh, 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 zero preserving contractions. And uh, then once again, let's say square is, is, is a forgetful functor. And uh, in this case, the free object is called the Lipschitz free space. So we start. Uh, so the so so the property is the following. If we start with the metric space, the map in T is a, a contractive mapping from this metric space to one space Z, then uh, we have we have a linear contractive extension uh, from uh, the Lipschitz free space F of A uh, uh, to the Banach space. So this and there are there are other examples as well. I'm not going to dwell on them uh, uh, in this lecture. Uh, so let's see any questions so far. By the way, uh, by the way, I, um, I I forgot to tell you at the beginning that of course if you have questions, I encourage you to interrupt me and ask questions, and I'll try to answer them. Um, but if not, let's move on. So uh, in our case, uh, uh, we'll talk. Uh, we'll we'll have we'll have we'll we'll we'll, 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 we'll yes. Maybe I have a question on the slide. Yeah. Just do I remember correctly though that the Lipschitz free space is pre dual to the Lipschitz continuous function? Is that right? Uh, I can't remember the definition. Uh, yes, yes, yes. That's that's that's. I'm not an expert, but but it looks right to me. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I mean, they they want that here, so I can say whatever I want about you. Uh, so, uh, so in uh, so what will be the categories will be working with? So uh, one category is band one, the category of Banach spaces, and the morphisms are uh, contractive uh, linear contractions. And then we will have another category which I, uh, I'll call dl one p. So this is the category of uh, Banach lattices which are p convex with constant one, and uh, morphisms are contractive uh, lattice homomorphisms. Uh, so what do those words mean? Well, um, uh, 
Uh, this is the definition of convexity. So I say that a Banach lattice X is called Q convex if for any uh, for any uh, n and for any n tuple of elements, this inequality is satisfied. Uh, uh, so if you wonder what the left hand side is, well, uh, uh, in general it can be defined using so-called functional calculus and Banach lattices. But if you are not familiar with it, you can think of X as a as a function space. And then operations like this on function spaces as I, I defined point wise. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, uh, the space LP is uh, Q convex with constant one if P is less than or equal than Q. And if P is greater than Q, then uh, e, it's, going, it's not going to be Q convex at all, unless, of course, we are in the finite dimensional situation. Uh, now, uh, before I before I say anything, well, uh, lattice lattice homomorphisms are um, um, are linear operators which preserve lattice operations uh, such as meet or join or mean or max, if you will. Um, and uh, the, uh, perhaps of special interest is the situation when p is equal to one. So when p is equal to one, um, uh, you see that. Uh, uh, one uh, one convexity will be satisfied automatically. This is just the triangle inequality. So when p is equal to one, we just require we recover the category of all Banach lattices uh, and uh, morphisms again are contractive lattice homomorphisms. And then we look at the uh, forgetful functor from the category of Banach lattices to the category of Banach spaces. So forgetful in the sense that it forgets about the lattice structure, but preserves linear and the Nozerian linear and norm structure. And uh, our goal is to, uh, uh, to show that uh, these three uh, objects exist. So these three objects we will denote by FBLP. So this is a free P convex Banach lattice. And um, we have to show that such an object exists and describe its properties. So, uh, here, here, this diagram shows what shows that what 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 uh, what should be uh, what properties should be satisfied. So um, uh, we we should have a a linear embedding phi or phi sub e from e into the corresponding Banach lattice, and the uh, and for any linear operator t. There should exist a linear extension T hat. Well, so this T hat is not just linear, it's actually a lattice homomorphism, and the norm of T hat should be the same as the norm of T. Uh, oops. Uh, uh, so uh, in this talk, I'll be focusing on the category of, of, of P convex lattices. Uh, one can consider other categories as well. For instance, uh, one can con consider the category of Banach lattices with an upper P estimates. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about this setting in, in, in this particular talk, uh, but, but there are people building this theory. So hopefully uh, uh, more uh, talks and papers on this topic will be forthcoming. Uh, so anyway, so what can we say about this? Um, uh, this this p-convex free Banach lattice. Well, let me just repeat the definition. Uh, so so a, uh, a suppose E is a Banach space, then a free p-convex Banach lattice on A e is the unique Banach lattice X. So that first of all X is p-convex with constant one. Second, there exists a, a linear isometry from E to X. So that the image of uh, the space E under this isometry generates X as a Banach lattice. And uh, thirdly, thirdly, there is uh, we have we have we have an extension like this. So if Z is a Banach lattice, Z is a P, Banach lattice P convex with constant one, then for any T from A to Z, then there, there is there is a uh, an extension T hat. Um, uh, so here maybe I should uh, say that it may appear that that this restriction. Of the target Banach lattice B, B and P convex with constant one is, is, is actually kind of too stringent because, well, what happens if P convex, uh, if, if P convexity constant is, is different? Well, it turns out that this is no problem because, um, uh, because uh, you can renorm the Banach lattice to make the P convexity constant to be one 
And from this, it follows that if the Z here, this target space Z is a P convex with constant C, then the extension uh, still exists, but now the norm, uh, for the norm, we have this, this estimate here involving C. And um, uh, perhaps the most interesting case is what happens when P is equal to one, because uh, every Banach lattice is um, uh, one uh, convex with constant one. And in this case, we will, I mean, the upper index, and we'll just talk about the free bonnet lattice, and this will, this will be denoted by FBL. Um, so, um, first of all, um, let, me, uh, uh, let me say, well, um, uh, I guess the first theorem, uh, the first result I should start with is to state that uh, the free bonnet lattice with these properties does indeed exist. And let me briefly show how it is constructed. Uh, so uh, we shall denote by h of a star the space of positively homogeneous mappings on uh, the positively homogeneous functions on the unit ball of a star. And uh, we denote by hp of a star the set of all those functions here, yeah, positively homogeneous functions. Uh, for which uh, there exists a constant C, so that if uh, we have a sequence, a finite sequence in E star with the P big norm not exceeding one, then uh, the strong LP norm of F of XI star, uh, of F evaluated at X I, X I star, does not exceed this C to the power P. Uh, and we denote um, uh, the P norm of F by the P norm of F we denote the infimum of all the C's uh, with this property. And um, here I remind you the, the definition of the PVIC norm of a sequence. So this is, this is actually something very familiar to those coming from the Banach space background, because this appears, for instance, in the theory of P summing operators. So in the theory of P summing operator, you, instead of this X, you take an element uh, of the of the you should take the element an element of the double dual, but moving from the double dual back to E is is pretty automatic from Hellis theorem, which is kind of a baby version of the principle of local reflexivity. Uh, now it's uh, so it may be interesting to see what happens with this P weak norm in uh, in the extreme case. So on one extreme you have P equal to infinity. And then the infinity weak norm is just the maximum of, uh, of the norms of, of those XI stars. And uh, when P is equal to one, this is the maximum of, of all the norms of uh, XI stars with plus minus signs. The maximum is taken over all the uh, possible selections of pluses and minuses. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, now we can define a, an embedding uh, from E into H, uh, H of a star. So we map each, we, we map an element X of E into, a, into an evaluation function. So uh, what is it? So we, the value of this function delta X at the point X star, well, this is just the dual action of X star onto X. And uh, the main theorem here is that first of all, this map from E into HP of a star is actually an isometry. And um, if you look at the Banach lattice generated by E under uh, this, this action of phi sub E, then uh, 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 this, is, uh, this is the free Banach the, the free P convex Banach lattice. Um, uh, now, um, uh, note that. Uh, uh, this function delta x is uh, weak star continuous. And therefore, if you look at uh, uh, the, if you look at the elements of this three Banach lattice, they will be weak star continuous as uh, the weak star continuous on the ball of a star as well. Uh, uh, so let me, uh, let me maybe, uh, maybe uh, uh, mention a few give a few simple remarks about those p-convex Banach lattices. So here I'm uh, restating the theorem from the previous slide and restating an observation, uh, uh, restating an observation that uh, all the functions will 
minus on the unit ball of this time. Uh, well, it turns out that when P is equal to infinity, uh, uh, FBL infinity is the set of all infinity convex Banach uh, the, the, the phi infinity convex Banach lattice will consist of all big star continuous functions in now h infinity of a star. So this, yeah, and so I can I can state it actually as a theorem that FBL infinity coincides with the space which I denote ch of a star. This is uh, the space of all weak star continuous uh, positively homogeneous functions on the unit on the unit ball of a star equipped with the, with the soup norm with the usual infinity norm. Uh, so the case uh, the case uh, well the key, uh, so here I there is there is some a little bit of a typo in uh, in my slide. So I should say that the case of p finite is different. Uh, because there is uh, in one of the one of the first papers on the topic, a paper of uh, Aviles Rodriguez and Fredacete, uh, there was this theorem that uh, uh, there is a weak star continuous functions, uh, weak star continuous functions g and f, uh, so that uh, first of all they they all in, in HP of L one star. Uh, now f is well, I wrote here that it's in in the absolute value of the range of phi. Of L1. So what, what I mean here is that there is an element of L1, so that F is, is the absolute value of its image in, in the corresponding free bana classes. Uh, uh, so here, here once again, the type of this should be FBLP, but the smaller function G is not in the free bana classes at all. So uh, in this paper, the, the theorem was stated for P equal to one, but uh, uh, it, it, the, but the construction actually works uh, for, um, uh, for, for arbitrary values of P, for arbitrary finite values. Of P. Uh, uh, so uh, in, in the terminology of Banach lattices, you can say that FBLP is not, for P finite, FBLP is not, is not a lattice ideal in, inside of the corresponding HP. So this makes uh, this makes things uh, uh, more complicated, and this is something that I'll probably come back to in my talk tomorrow. Uh, uh, so here I also would like to mention the connection of three Banach lattices with three vector lattices. So uh, uh, I'm not going to give a definition first, but let me just denote by uh, by uh, F yellow with the three vector the vector lattice generated by the image of V. E. In, in, in inside of this H uh, of a star inside of the uh, 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 space of, of positively homogeneous functions on the ball of a star. Uh, so it turns out that this FVL, well, it's it's a free bonnet, it's it's called it's it's indeed a free vector lattice in the following sense that it has it has this property that it pick up a Banach lattice Z and it pick up a contractive map T from A to Z, then uh, it extends, uh, well, sorry, T doesn't have to be contractive, it just has to be a, a linear map. So then T hat extends into, uh, it, this T extends into a map T hat, uh, uh, which, which is now a, 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 a lattice homomorphism. Uh, so um, uh, from the definition, uh, we know that uh, the uh, free p convex Banach lattice is the norm closure of the free vector lattice. So we can actually say more. We can say that it is actually an order closure. We can say in the sense that uh, the free vector lattice is order dense in uh, the free Banach lattice in the following sense that for every positive function f in the free Banach lattice, there is a positive function G, which is dominated by F. So, even, so, so in a sense, uh, in a sense, uh, the, free, the, free, the free vector lattice is somehow ubiquitous in the free Banach lattice. Uh, let me uh, make a pause and get some water, and then we continue. <laughs> no, isn't that the wrong way around? Couldn't you just take G to be zero always? Uh, well, yeah, so this is, this, is, uh, this is unfortunately another typo that I will have to correct. I meant that G is not zero. Of course, you, of course you, can, you can take G to be zero, but, but this would be cheating. 
but but the existence of non-zero non-zero G is, is certainly a non-trivial fact. Sorry? Yeah. And for, for three vector lattices, E is a Banach lattice? Uh, well, uh, uh, E, uh, e uh, well, uh, E, well, for I, I, in, 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 in this work, in this talk, E is a Banach lattice, but you can define the free, you can define the free vector lattice. Uh, Banach. Or, 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 or you, sorry, e, sorry, E is a Banach space, right? But you can define the free vector <laughs> lattice on, on the general norm space. Now, um, uh, uh, now, now, of course, if you if if in general you you work with norm spaces, then uh, the target will also have to be a norm lattice. So the so in 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 this more general setting, the theory will probably be have to be adjusted somehow. All right, let's see. Here's the questions. I have a simple question. Uh, in the theorem, you can also obtain that G is close to F in non. Uh, of F minus G small too. Uh, okay. Well, I don't remember. I think I think it should be possible, because because I think I think you can uh, you can you can take something you you take can take G this G. You can also take something which is close to F in norm, and then somehow you manipulate them. Okay. But but yes. Is that also work if p is infinity? Uh, it, uh, this this also works if p this 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 theorem also works if p is infinity. The previous one. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the the, que the question for me though, if you can even choose g such that is close and non-free. So I believe that this is possible if p is smaller than infinity. But if p is infinity, can I then also choose g to be close in norm to f? Because somehow this this I would you. So one more, what one wants to do is subtract G, then choose another, another G, subtract it, and so on, right? But if infinity, this probably doesn't converge. Uh, um, well, uh, well, uh, this will not necessarily, but 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 there is, but but there, but but instead, in, in addition to this, you can also use the fact that the free vector lattice is norm dense. In the bigger lattice, so you uh, okay. so you have you have in a sense two sources. Okay. You have this kind of order approximations, and then you have the norm approximation. So the question is how well you can combine them. Right. So yeah. so maybe maybe you can do it reasonably well, but but I I I, I don't know honestly. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, okay, let's see. So. Uh, uh, so let me let me let me uh, remind uh, let me remind you what we know already, what we know already. So uh, we know that the, in, in the case of f uh, of p is equal to infinity, uh, the free Banach lattice in, uh, will will consist of all weak star continuous positively homogeneous functions, uh, and uh, in general, by the way, when we talk about positively homogeneous functions. On the ball of a star, we can uh, extend them to positively homogeneous functions on the pole of a star. And in this situation, they will be weak star continuous unbounded sets, although not necessarily on the star itself. And uh, later, later we will uh, we will often talk about the functions as if they were defined on the pole space of star. So if uh, if uh, so uh, once again F B L P the P convex three Banach lattice is a sub lattice which is uh, which is generated by the evaluation functionals with a certain norm. Uh, now e, so those norms are comparable in the sense that if Q is greater than P, then uh, the P norm is greater or equal than the Q norm, which means that. Uh, we naturally get this contractive inclusion of the p convex uh, three Banach lattice to the q convex three Banach lattice. Uh, it turns out that if, of course, if we is infinite dimensional, then um, it's um, then the free Banach lattice is a complicated object. But if e is finite dimensional, then the free Banach lattice is um, reasonably easy to describe. Because, for instance, when p is equal to infinity, 
the free bandwidth lattice will be just will be lattice isometric to this uh, ch of a star and this ch of a star can be uh, of course identified with um, uh, the space of continuous functions on the unit sphere of a star and uh, this in turn can be approximated can be identified with the space of continuous functions with the with the with the, with the sphere in our end uh, uh, when p when p is finite uh, we don't have this isometric identification but we still have an isomorphic identification uh, and we actually have control of the norms uh, because well in general the p norm will be greater or equal than the infinity norm and uh, in turn this will be less than or equal than n times the infinity norm where n is once again the dimension of it and um, it turns out also that it's easy to characterize or to describe the uh, uh, infinity free Banach lattice uh, when n is equal to one. So E is just a one dimensional, one dimensional Banach space. Uh, so by the way, I forgot to say that in this talk, all my Banach spaces are real. I'm not touching complex, uh, complex numbers and I'm not touching complex Banach lattices. So in this situation, what is this unit sphere? Well, this is the unit sphere of or in, in R, which just consists of two points, positive and negative one. So the three Banach lattice will uh, uh, will be two, will be will be the space of continuous functions on this uh, two element set. So in other words, you identify it with L infinity of dimension two. And in this, and you can actually describe what, what is the function phi and uh, what is the extension T hat. So the function phi. Uh, uh, we'll uh, uh, take, well, we'll, uh, we'll take one, the real number one, to the vector one negative one. And then for other real values, well, you just scale that. And let's say we have uh, a linear map T from A to Z. So this map T is, of course, uh, since C is one dimensional, the T is uniquely determined by the image of one. Uh, so we, we write it here one as a difference of uh, the we call it Z. We define it, uh, we write it as a difference of positive and negative parts of Z. And then T uh, uh, hat, well, uh, the first vector, uh, the first component um, is mapped into a multiple of Z plus. The second component is mapped into a multiple of Z minus. So this is this is a very simple, the simplest possible example of a free body classes, of course, but as dimension increases, so does complexity. Uh, let's see. So what are some questions that I will try to raise and hopefully at least partially answer in this series of talks? Uh, so the first before I before asking questions, let me let me maybe draw one more diagram. Uh, so let's focus on this uh, on the bottom. Uh, arrow in this diagram for a moment. So let's say F and B are two Banach spaces. T is the linear operator between them. Uh, so now if you embed, you embed E into the corresponding free P convex Banach lattice, so then um, uh, the operator T will have an extension into this, which I will denote by T bar. Uh, so it turns out that, of course, well, uh, uh, so this this is the definition of T bar. So it turns out that bar behaves in a reasonably good way. So um, uh, uh, it uh, the bar operation, the extension operation, commutes or intertwines the composition operator. Uh, so the first question I would like to uh, um, to address is the following. So let's say uh, so what kind of properties of T. Uh, pass to this canonical extension T bar. Uh, second, I will try to determine the sublattice and subspace structure of free Banach lattices. Fourth, I will try to find some connections between uh, properties of E, and by, by properties, I usually mean Banach space properties of E, and the properties of the corresponding free convex Banach, free P convex Banach lattices. Uh, uh, the next question is well, uh, uh, well, uh, let's suppose what, in what situations are free Banach lattices are, uh, uh, are isometric or isomorphic? Uh, 
And here, here it's, it's an important, well, it's, it's, an easy, it's an easy observation that if we have an isomorphism T here in the bottom row, then T bar on the top, in the top row will also be, will be a lattice isomorphism, meaning that it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a lattice homomorphism, which has an inverse. And the same for isometry. So if T is an, is an isometry, then in the top row we have um, a lattice isometry T. Uh, and therefore, if we end up isomorphic or isometric, then the, oops, 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 I pressed the wrong button. Uh, so uh, if 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 T and uh, if we and F rather are the same in some sense, then the same is true for the corresponding three bionic lattices. Uh, but the question is, can it happen that the three bionic lattices are the same, but the spaces are different? And uh, the last the last question, which which is I think worse, uh, uh, well at least I will I, I I included it in the in the slides, is that uh, what can we say about the position of the range? Of this embedding phi inside of the free bundle classes. Uh, so the way to attack it, for me at least, is that well, let's say we have some kind of a nice sequence in the bundle space E. Uh, well, what can we say about the well, not the image of this um, uh, uh, in this sequence, but rather the module, the sequence of moduli of uh, of the images in the free bundle classes. Uh, so uh, let me start with the first question about the behavior of T versus T bar. Uh, so what kind of properties of T pass to T bar? So if T is an isomorphism, then the same is true for T bar. And also if T is an isometry, the same is true for T bar. Uh, injectivity also passes back and forth. T is injective if and only if T bar is injective. Uh, dense range. The same dense range if t, t, t has dense range, if and only if t bar has dense range. Uh, surjectivity, t is surjective if and only if t bar is surjective. Uh, well, what is conspicuously missing from this list? Uh, well, uh, in, uh, being an embedding, being, iso, being an isomorphic, uh, isomorphic embedding is missing. So under what conditions uh, it can we say that if t is an uh, isomorphic embedding, then T, T bar is also an isomorphic embedding. So it turns out that the answer to this question is related to, uh, to extensions or, uh, of operators into LP spaces. So here I'm just restating this, the question uh, I'm trying to answer. And as an answer, we have the following theory uh, that, uh, well, I should say that I'm restating. I'm not. I'm, cha I'm, I'm changing. I'm changing the notation a little bit. So I'm looking at the situation when f is a subspace of E, and I denote the natural embedding of f into E by I on. And I want to compare the the, the uh, I want to I want to uh, I know so I O is clearly an isometric an isometric embedding. So I want to determine in what situations I O bar is also, well, is, is some kind of an isomorphic embed. Uh, and, and as an answer to this, we have this theorem that uh, let's say C is a constant and the following statements are equivalent. So the first one is that uh, the map iota is bounded below. The map iota, in other words, is a, is, 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 is a lattice uh, isomorphism and this, this C is, is related to the lower bound. Uh, the second statement is an extension is, is the existence of extensions into uh, finite dimensional P spaces. So for any uh, uh, for any n and for any positive epsilon and for any operator from E if U from F to LPN, there exists an extension from E into LPN so that the norm is controlled in this manner. And the third uh, statement is the restatement, the third item is the restatement of the second item, except that. Now we are moving from the finite dimensional P to the infinite, to the infinite dimensional capital P, and we are getting rid of epsilon. Uh, so here is, here is once again the statement of the previous theorem, and this motivates, uh, uh, motivated us to introduce a property which we call POE, POEP. Uh, property of operator extensions into LP. So, we, so a pair EFE has this property, 
if uh, uh, those equivalent conditions are satisfied. Uh, and we say that the pair F e has a P or a P if it has C P or a P with some constant C. Uh, further, we were looking at the spaces F which have the P or a P with any ambient space E. So, uh, so, so F is P or has a P or a P if, if, if for any ambient E, this pair F E has, has a P or a P property. Uh, and it turns out that in this situation, there is a constant C which works for, uh, for all the ambient E's. Uh, and uh, well, you don't, I, I, I was talking about, in, in, in the definition of, of, of the POEP, I'm talking about all ambient spaces E, but really you don't have to consider all of them. It's just enough to consider L infinity of gamma for a sufficiently large set gamma and, and the rest will uh, follow from, uh, from the injectivity of this space. Uh, so the next question, so now we have, we, we have, we have a Banach space uh, question on our hands. So we ask for each pairs, uh, for each, which pairs F E or which spaces F has this P or P, has this property of extension of operators into L P. Uh, so here is, here is, here is a diagram um, uh, describing this definition. Uh, so first of all, if P is equal to infinity, of course, L infinity N is injective. And therefore we always have this extension property. Uh, if F is complemented in E, then we also have an extension for this extension property. And actually this complementation uh, can be relaxed a little bit. You can also, you can, you actually local complementation will be sufficient. I'm not going to give the definition, but, uh, but this, is, this is something a little bit uh, more general. Uh, so in all those questions, on, in all those situations, uh, uh, iota bar, uh, if iota is the embedding of F and E, then iota bar will uh, 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 give us a, a lattice embedding between the corresponding three Banach lattices. Uh, so it turns out uh, that uh, for, uh, for P between one and two, we have, a, we have this kind of a characterization of spaces with the POEP property, namely that F has a POEP, if and only if we have, if and only if any operator f uh, from f into L p is to sum, and there is uh, there is of course quite a bit of uh, quite a, quite a bit is known about spaces with this property. So let me maybe at least sketch a proof what, of what's going on here. So let's first of all suppose that f has a POEP, and let's embed it as I suggested actually on the previous slide. Let's embed f into L infinity of gamma for uh, a sufficiently large set gamma. Uh, and well, in this situation, we have an extension and we know that any operator from, uh, from a C of K space to LP for, for this range of P's is, is two summing. So well, the two summing norm of U is no more than the two summing norm of its, 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 its extension, sorry, its extension U tilde. And this in turn is controlled by is this this is no more than uh, the growth in the constant k times the norm of u tilde and and uh, the norm of u tilde is controlled via the norm of u. Uh, now for the other direction, well, if um, uh, if because if uh, if uh, any um, uh, if any bounded operator from F into LP is to summing, then um, there is a constant k, so that for any u we have this kind of estimate p to uh, the two summing norm of u is no more than k times the operator norm, uh, and then we know that uh, two summing operators extend without the uh, without uh, increasing the two summing norms. Uh, so we have we have u tilde going from now the ambient space e into LP, so that the norm of u tilde is no more than the two summing norm of it, which is the two summing norm of u, and this is controlled by the norm of u itself. Um, so let me close here. I hope this annoying squeaking sound of the bottle is not going to be recorded. <laughs> 
Well, anyway, so what can we say about various relations between P, well, between P O E P? So, well, here I'm restating the theorem from the previous slide. Uh, uh, so, uh, as far as the relations are concerned, well, uh, if P and Q are between one and two, and P is a small is smaller, then P O E P implies P O E Q. Uh, on the other hand, if P is greater than if P is uh, between two and infinity, strictly less than infinity, of course, then POEP implies POE2. And uh, as an example, I want, as, as far as examples I concern, are concerned, I want to say that little on one has the POEP uh, for uh, uh, if and only if P is uh, between two and infinity. So this, so we have this kind of phase transition too. And uh, well, uh, once again, let me sketch a proof. Uh, so for, for the first part, we know that the space LQ, if, 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 if P and Q are, are like this, then LQ embeds into LP isometrically. Uh, then what do we know? We know that the bounded operator, that any bounded operator from F into LP is to summing. So if you look now, you look at bounded operators from F into LQ, they, they actually can be viewed as also as operators into LP. And uh, therefore, the P, they will have to be P summing because the, the, the ideal of two summing operators is injective. Uh, uh, the, the two summing norm does not uh, depend on, uh, does not change when you increase the target space. Uh, and uh, for the second, uh, for the second uh, item, you use the fact that uh, for P, for P greater, for P uh, actually greater than two, uh, L2 can embed into LP complementary. Uh, so, so these are these are some of the connections between P, these are the connections between POEPs that we know. But what happens? Well, uh, what happens, uh, for instance, when P and Q are on the different sides of two, or if P and Q are both greater than two? Are there any connections between, between the POEP and POEQ properties? So my guess is that, that there are none, but uh, uh, this is, this is uh, something which, uh, this, this is a question which awaits uh, uh, investigation in this. Uh, so uh, here I should also mention the property which is related to POEP. And uh, this is a property of MP uh, which was um, uh, which appears in the in a paper of Kazaza and Nielsen from 2003. Uh, uh, so M M is uh, the, the, the letter M was chosen because this is related to the Moray extension property. Uh, so we say that E has M P if for any subspace F any operator from subspace to L P extends. Uh, to an operator to the bigger space E. Uh, so in, in our terminology, uh, this would mean that for any subspace F, the embedding of FDL, can you see it? The screen is not on the way, right? Uh, the embedding between the three Banach uh, lattices on F and, of F and D will actually be a, a lattice isomorphism. Uh, well, FBLP, FBLP, I forgot to write P here. Um, uh, so this, this will be a lattice isomorphism for any subspace F of it. And um, uh, they, uh, in that paper, they have some characterizations uh, of, of, of spaces which have this property MP. So perhaps the most interesting uh, from the Banach lattice standpoint is the following. So let's say E is a curtain function space on zero one, uh, with, which has property MP when P is strictly between two and infinity, then it turns out that E is isomorphic to a Hilbert space. So of course Hilbert space, Hilbert space clearly has this MP property, but it turns out that it's, it's the only option. Um, so then, uh, well, I, um, I've talked about the situation when this embedding is a lattice isomorphism, 
And the next question is, well, here, here we have, uh, here, here are BLP of F, is a sublattice of FBL P of E. Under what conditions is it a complemented sublattice? Or even maybe more restrictively, a lattice complemented sublattice, meaning that you have a lattice projection going from the bigger lattice to the smaller one. And uh, as a warm up, let's, let's, let me mention some easy observations. So let's say we have, we have, we have an embedding iota. And let's say P is a projection from E back into F. Uh, 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 so in this case, uh, in this case, if you if you look at P bar and iota bar, then uh, 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 then this gives you a factorization of the identity uh, on the free bundle classes of F through E. So in this situation. The free bundle classes on on uh, on uh, uh, in this situation, the free bundle classes of F is lattice complemented in the free bundle classes of E. And here, our question and and beyond this, we don't really know much. So we are asking whether this is the only situation when uh, a free bundle classes uh, can be lattice complemented. Uh, uh, is the free bundle classes of F can be lattice complemented in a free bundle classes of E. And uh, the second question is something about which we know more. What can we say about the sub lattices of uh, the free bundle classes of E? So, what, what can we find there? Uh, so, or more generally, what do we know about the subspace and the sub lattice structure of a free bundle classes? Uh, mm. Uh, so uh, the first observation is that if is that if E has dimension greater or equal than N, then if BLP contains a lattice complemented sublattice, which 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 is uh, which, which is lattice isomorphic to uh, the space of continuous functions on well S n minus one is the unit sphere in R n, uh, and uh, here this is this is also fairly straightforward. Because it's enough to pick an n-dimensional subspace E F inside of E, uh, being finite dimensional F will be automatically complemented, and uh, then F B L P of F is is just the set of the space of continuous function on the sphere, and uh, it will also be lattice complemented. And uh, in particular, well, what happens if and what happens if n we take n to be two? Well, if if we take n to be two. Then we just get the set of uh, the space of continuous functions on the unit torus, which is which we know is universal. It's injectively universal uh, for separable Banach spaces. So if E is uh, a Banach space of dimensions at least two, then uh, this the corresponding free Banach classes uh, contains well isometrically no mentally cross it over. This should be isomorphically. Isom contains isomorphically all separable or any separable Banach space. Uh, well, uh, it turns out that the situation is, is the situation is different in uh, in the non-separable setting because well, let's say gamma is uncountable set, and uh, p and uh, p is less than two, q is greater than two, then uh, the free uh, Banach uh, lattice of LP of gamma. Does not embed as a Banach space into the free Banach lattice of LQ of gamma, and uh, this this is due to uh, some consideration of weak compact generation, weak, weak compact generation, and uh, uh, this is probably something that I'll talk about uh, in in tomorrow's talk. Uh, uh, next, I want to maybe uh, discuss the situation when E is a Banach lattice. So let's. So what? How does it sit inside of the free Banach lattice built on it? Uh, so the canonical embedding is not a lattice embedding. Uh, however, there are situations when you still can find the lattice copy of E in the free Banach lattice. So uh, specifically, let's suppose that uh, e, that that the Banach lattice structure on E. Is determined by its one unconditional basis, uh, and E is p convex with constant one. So you can think of it of E as as, as actually a sequence space. 
Uh, then there is a let's like, say symmetric embedding uh, of E into the uh, P convex three Banach lattice. Uh, uh, and there is also a, lattice a contractive lattice projection back onto E. Uh, so in particular, uh, if you look at Q and P, well, you want Q to be greater or equal than P to have this P convexity um, condition satisfied. Then you'll see that FBLP of Q uh, contains LQ as a lattice complemented sublattice. And if Q is infinity, well, we have C0 instead. Oops. Oh, oh, this is, I can, I can just as well. Uh, so you may think that, um, well, a free, at, in, at least in the separable case, a free Banach lattice contains, um, contains all separable Banach spaces. It, it, it also contains, if it also, it can also contain uh, E as a sublattice. Well, does every Banach lattice embed into a free Banach lattice as a sublattice? Well, it turns out that the answer is negative. And uh, uh, here we have this, uh, this a major restriction uh, on sublattices of free Banach lattice comes from this theorem that uh, if Z is a sublattice, of a free Banach lattice, then lattice homomorphisms in Z star uh, separate points in Z. So what, what does this terminology mean? What are lattice homomorphisms in Z star? Well, um, uh, Z star is, um, uh, is of course the dual of Z. So any element of capital Z star, that's a little Z star uh, can be, uh, is a map from Z star into Rio. Uh, so both on the left and on the right sides here, we have Banach lattices. So we can just think of uh, what it means for a, a linear map between Banach lattices to be lattice homomorphism. So we want uh, we want to, we wanted to uh, preserve lattice operations, and it turns out that uh, to check this. It, you have to uh, check that first of all, the map Z star is non negative. And second, if X and Y are two disjoint elements of Z star, then, uh, uh, sorry, of the, of the body class is Z star, then this little Z star annihilates either one or the other. Um, so, one example to keep in mind is that you look at C of K, then uh, an element of the dual is the lattice homomorphisms. If it's a lattice homomorphism, if and only if it's a point evaluation. And uh, 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 it turns out that this point evaluation idea is also useful for free Banach lattices. So let's look at the P convex free Banach lattice as sitting inside of HP of a star. So I remind you that HP of a star is the set of positively homogeneous functions on the unit ball of a star. So we, we have this lattice embedding. Uh, uh, and the map phi in the dual of the free body classes is a lattice homomorphism if and only if it uh, comes from uh, evaluation at some point x star in the dual. So I uh, so this 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 so I, I denote this evaluation by x star with a hat and. Uh, and, and the action of X star with the hat, well, we just evaluate the function F. Uh, we, we just evaluate F in, in the free Banach lattice at the point X star. And um, those evaluations at X star, they clearly separate HP and, cert and, and there, therefore they separate FBLP because FBLP is a sublattice. Uh, so uh, as a corollary, we can see that the free Banach lattice uh, on E, no matter what E is, a free Banach lattice cannot contain um, uh, a lattice isomorphic copy of LQ, because of course on LQ, the, 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 dual, the, dual of a, the dual to LQ will not contain any lattice homomorphism. This is, this is for instance, by his Fisher theorem about uh, the dual of LQ. Uh, uh, so and and this this topic uh, this topic about the lattice homomorphisms in the dual um, uh, 
leads me to um, at least briefly discuss the dual of the three banner classes. And uh, to begin with, I want to discuss the atoms there. Uh, so, uh, so first of all, what is, what is an atom? Uh, what is an atom in, uh, what, what does it mean that Z star is an atom in the dual of Z, Z is a bunch of classes? Well, uh, this means that uh, the only elements of the Banach lattice, which are between this, this Z star and, this, and zero, are multiple are multiples of Z star. So of course, every multiple of Z star, if you multiply this Z star by something between zero and one, you'll get something between zero and Z star. And being, at, being an atom means that this is, these are the only elements between zero and Z star. Uh, so it turns out this is kind of a well-known fact in, 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 in Banach lattices that that uh, this is an atom, if and only this Z star is an atom, if and only if it implements a lattice homomorphisms, a lattice homomorphism from Z into R. And uh, here I let me, I'm, I'm repeating the notations that I, I used to have before. So if we have uh, E star and the D, if, if E is a Banach lattice, then uh, e, e star with a hat is, is the evaluation map. And so we know that it's a lattice homomorphism Extend, and uh, maybe on a more, more axiomatic level, we can think of E star cat as a lattice homomorphism which extends E star. So E star is, is a linear operator from E to R, and from the definition of a free Banach lattice, uh, there exists a unique lattice homomorphism which extends it, uh, extends this with, with the same norm. Uh, and it's possible to observe. So, by the way, here in this in this in this in this observation, I'm not uh, I'm not uh, giving the name of, of of the author of this observation. I think this is kind of a Banach uh, free Banach lattice folklore. Uh, well, no, this is not free Banach lattice folklore. Uh, so this is, but this is still a, a common observation that uh, we know that if we have a lattice homomorphism. T from X to Y, X and Y are light Banach lattices, then it's dual T star is interval preserved. <clears throat> and uh, therefore, the image of an atom is once again an atom. And this is why it's, it's uh, the study of atoms in the, Banach, in the dual of a Banach lattice is, is, is so essential. And this is, this is the part which I advertised like plus folklore. Uh, so um, it says that uh, a, a, a linear functional uh, on a p convex on the free p convex Banach lattice is an atom precisely if it, if and only if it comes from an evaluation. So as here is a proof. I, I will skip it. And uh, 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 because I want to get to 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 to, to some other uh, useful facts about atoms, uh, one has to uh, uh, has to do with with uh, evaluating the, the norms of sums of atoms. Uh, and let me remind you the uh, notion of the cubic norm. So let's say we have a, uh, we have an n-tuple in the Banach lattice key. So the cubic norm of this n-tuple, well, you can define it like this as the maximum of the norms of lambda e times lambda i times the i, where, where we have this restriction on lambdas. And you can also think of it as uh, uh, as as uh, as the norm of, a, of an operator u from LQ prime, uh, uh, with, with, from n dimensional LQ prime to uh, uh, to e. So this this operator u takes uh, the canonical vector basis to e, and this is of course the same as uh, the map from the dual from the star into LQ n, and uh, we can use this, we shall use this last uh, observation to say that, uh, well, let's say we have, uh, we have a Banach space E, we have, and we have an n-tuple and it's dual a star. Then, uh, well, uh, the, um, uh, then we have a one hat, et cetera, et cetera, E and hat in, uh, uh, as, 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 uh, as, as, as atoms in the dual of a free Banach lattice. Uh, then it turns out that for any p, for any q greater or equals than p, 
the Q norm, the cubic norm of the of the n tuple of the i stars is the same as the cubic norm of this of 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 the same sequence, but with the with the hats. And um, the proof, well, uh, let's look at um, uh, the operator T, which takes into LQN. So, so basically, we are uh, we are testing each E on those EI stars, and this gives us a sequence of lengths n. And then the norm of this operator T is precisely the cubic norm of the n tuple, as we noticed before. And then this T has an extension T hat, uh, extensions from uh, extension from a free uh, P convex lattice into LQN. And uh, of course, if you if you if you look at each coordinate, you see that at each coordinate, this extension only has to be EI uh, star with a hat. Uh, so this so this 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 is the formula for the extension T hat, and this extension has the same norm. And what is the same norm? This is precisely the cubic norm, but now the cubic norm of this sequence of VI star with cuts. Um, so this this uh, this this uh, look this may look kind of very uh, very maybe theoretical, uh, but uh, but this um, this proposition will have a uh, uh, will be will be mostly applicable in the situation when both P and Q are equal to one. So then we see that the one week norm of the n tuple consisting of AI stars is, is what? It's the same as the one week norm of the n tuple of AI star cats. And what is this? This is the maximum of, of this sum, the maximum overall taken over all possible pluses and minuses. Uh, but now let's suppose that all the i stars um, well, let's, let's say they are sufficiently distinct. Let's say for simplicity that they are even linearly independent. Uh, so, uh, so in this situation, these are atoms, and these atoms are mutually, mutually disjoint. And therefore, the norm will not depend on the choice of classes and minuses. And this turns out to be useful in practical applications. Uh, but for now, let me, uh, let me, let me, uh, uh, let me, let me, well, let me, I, 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 let me, let me give you this definition. And, and, and in this definition, I now realize that, 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 that I have to also make a correction here. So I say, I'm saying that, that an element uh, of the dual of a p convex Banach lattice is finitely presented if it can be represented as this type as this linear combination of atoms. And uh, here, I, I, I uh, in the slide, I require that um, uh, the, the corresponding AI stars are distinct, but actually, I need to require much more. Well, not much more, a little bit more. I want them to be not only distinct, but also the, I, I, I want them to not to be positive linear multiples of each other. And, and this, is, this is not really an, an important um, restriction. Uh, and, and the coefficients alpha, I want them to be either positive or negative ones. And in, in this situation, uh, as I have just explained on the board, uh, the norm of such, a, um, of such a finitely presented operator is just the one week norm of the of the sun tuple of the stars, and uh, it turns out that those uh, finitely presented operators are uh, are weak star dense in the in the dual of the free Banach classes. So in in, in in and actually, if you work with the unit ball, they will be also weak star dense in the unit ball, 
And the same will actually be true for, for, for vector value free one classes. And uh, it's, as I said, it's the most, this, this is most interesting when P is equal to one. Uh, and I want to be able, to, I want to look at um, uh, operators between three Banach classes and in the case when P is one. Uh, so let me, let me recall a definition now. This definition comes from Banach space side of things. So an operator T is called uh, one to R summing if for any, uh, for any uh, finite collection in, in the domain of this operator, we have this inequality and there is a constant C here. This constant C should be here in front of the FIs. Uh, and uh, uh, the one to R summing norm is the infimum of such Cs. <coughs> On the other hand, in the Banner classes situation, we can think of R to infinity convex operators. So what, what it means for R infinity to be uh, for T to be R infinity convex, well, this is this is what we uh, this is this is the inequality that we uh, want to uh, hold, and the corresponding norm is defined by CBX uh, convex uh, R infinity convex norm of T, and it turns out that uh, there is this uh, uh, connection between. Uh, uh, are infinity convex norms of operators between three Banach lattices and uh, the summing norms of operators of duals of operators. Uh, so U star is, uh, is um, let's say U is, is an operator between Banach spaces A and F, then uh, U star is, uh, U is, uh, U is, U bar, uh, the, the operator between three Banach lattices is R to infinity convex. If and only if uh, we have the summing condition imposed on our two stars on U star, and we have this equality uh, uh, of, of the norms. And the proof is well, the proof is, is passing to the dual, because in the dual, we now know uh, enough about, uh, about the five, about, uh, we, we, we know enough now about the dual. Um, so this, this proposition. It looks kind of very, very uh, unpractical. Like who cares about this, this, this convex norm? Who cares about one to R plus summing uh, uh, norms of operators? But it turns out that it does have certain uh, applications. Um, and uh, to give you the applications, I first of all re 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 remind you of the definition of U of, of a Banach lattice being Q convex with constants. So Q convexity is this, um, is, it requires this condition. And if we uh, relax it a little bit, we say that the Banach lattice has an upper, to a, upper Q estimate, but well, once again, this constant C, well, it just means that this, this, this horribly, horribly named norm from the previous slide has the e of the, this, this norm of, of the identity on it has norm not exceeding C. And uh, this is equivalent to saying that for any n tuple of X size, we have this inequality here. So if you compare uh, the, the, the inequality for uh, defining Q convexity with the inequality defining the upper Q estimate, You'll see that they are very similar, except that the right hand side is the same and the left hand side, well, they are similar but different. And actually, it turns out that for, for upper Q estimates, it's sufficient to check this inequality when uh, the vectors uh, Xi are disjoint. And um, specializing to the situation when the identity, when, when we are dealing with the identity operator on A, we see that the following statements are equivalent. Uh, the first one is the free Banach lattice C has an upper P estimate. And the second, the identity of one E star is one to P prime summing. P prime is of course the conjugate of P. Uh, and in this situation, in this situation, uh, it turns out that only the values of P between one and two are feasible. You cannot have here, uh, uh, you cannot have P, uh, well, uh, you cannot, uh, for instance, FBL, uh, the free Banach lattice cannot have upper P estimate 
for p greater than two. Um, and uh, from this we from this we can say uh, uh, we can find uh, th can, so this this last theorem can be used to find some connections between um, uh, between uh, geometric properties of E and the geometric properties of the corresponding free Banach class. So here is here is what I had in mind. Uh, so uh, for a Banach space E, the following are equivalent. The first statement is that E contains uh, uniformly complementable copies of L1N. Uh, second, uh, the free Banach lattice contains L1N as sub lattices, also uniformly. Uh, the third, uniformly, uh, in the third, the third item is, is, is a strengthening of uh, the second one. Here we require the existence of uh, subspaces L1N. But they will here also be uniformly light, uniformly, and also uniformly light is complemented. And uh, in the the fourth item is is the weakening of three, because now we only require that L one ends are contained in this inside of a free Banach lattice as subspaces and only uniformly complemented. And there are several more uh, equivalent statements which I which I have not. Um, put on this slide. Uh, so let me maybe uh, sketch a proof of when y is equivalent to two. Uh, so, uh, e contain, so let's say one holds, well, which means that E contains uh, copies of L1 n uniformly complemented. If you pass to the dual, this is equivalent to saying that the star contains copies of L infinity n. Uh, and in this case, complementability, of course, will be automatic. Uh, this is equivalent to a star having on the trivial cotide. Uh, this is equivalent to saying that the identity on a star is not is not r plus r uh, is not it does not is not uh, 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 is not uh, uh, one to r plus summing for any for any finite r plus. Of course, we always have this uh, some ability for r plus equal to infinity. And uh, this, uh, from from uh, from from what we have seen before, this is equivalent to the free Banach lattice, not having any upper R estimates for any R greater than one. And uh, now we can use Krivin's theorem about um, uh, sub lattices of Banach lattice to deter to to conclude that the free Banach lattice E. Uh, contains uh, L1 and as sub lattices uniformly. And then, of course, you can retrace all those uh, equivalences back. Um, uh, so, here I was talking about finding, dim uh, 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 finding dimensional ones in the uniform, uh, uh, uniform containment. Uh, there, is, there is a similar result about the big L1. But of course, here the proof has to be different because we don't have all those la nice local tools such as type, cotype, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to, to, to work with an infinite dimensional big uh, infinite dimensional space L1. Uh, so, nevertheless, we have been able to prove the following that uh, a Banach space E, if let's say, is a Banach space, then the following are equivalent. The first is that E contains a complemented copy or a copy of capital L1. Uh, the free Banach lattice uh, contains uh, L1 as a sub lattice, and thirdly, it contains uh, the free Banach lattice contains L1 as a sub lattice, which is lattice complement. Uh, so now let me go back. Uh, uh, well, not me go back. Let me actually go forward, and let's look at the situation when E is a Banach is a Banach lattice itself, and we build a free Banach lattice at BL of A on that. Uh, so it turns out that in this situation, so let's say P here is strictly between one and two. In this, and we can prove that E is if uh, that uh, E has an upper P estimate, if and only if, if and only if it's a uh, free Banach lattice has an upper P estimate. Uh, and we don't by the well, of course of course when p is equal to one then then uh, then uh, upper p estimates are automatic and uh, when p when p is equal to two we don't know what happens 
And uh, as a corollary, we show that, uh, uh, you suppose that E and F are bonded lattices, and F is isomorphic to a complemented subspace of E. So here, it's, it's, it's a linear isomorphism, it's not, a, it's not a lattice isomorphism, and the complementation is, just, is also just the existence of a linear projection. Uh, then if the bigger lattice has an upper P estimate, then the smaller lattice has an upper P estimate as well. And similar results have already been known for, uh, for convexity, but for, 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 um, uh, for um, uh, upper, actually use the free, uh, not the free theory to, uh, to get to this, to this result. Uh, and uh, well, I don't want to sketch the proof. Instead, maybe I want to at least briefly cover the last, uh, the last topic uh, of the talk. Uh, namely, let's say we start with a nice sequence CK in the space E, in the, in, the, in the underlying space E, and I want to look at its images in uh, the corresponding P convex banner classes, uh, P convex banner classes. Uh, so, uh, Let's suppose first that EK is a basis in the space E. Then, um, uh, then the images of EK will, or the moduli of the images of EK will form a basic sequence in the free body classes. And if we start with an unconditional <coughs> basis, then we end up with an unconditional basic sequence. Well, the question is what kind of, uh, if we start with some nice basis, Basis with known properties. What will we get in the Banach lattice? Well, this question was once again answered in one of the first papers on the topic by Villastra de Sette and Villanueva. Uh, they showed that if we have, uh, let's say, K is a canonical basis in LQ, uh, then um, uh, the, the moduli of the images in the free Banach lattice will be equivalent to the canonical LR basis. Where R is well, it's one when Q is between one and two, and otherwise, well, when Q is greater than two, then we have this formula for R. Um, uh, so, in particular, let's say let's see what happens when Q is equal to when Q is equal to infinity. When uh, we have uh, the, when e Q e, sorry when e K is a canonical basis in C zero. Then in the free body lattices, uh, we will get a copy of the canonical C0 basis. Uh, so it turns out that this, this case, this, this statement of C0 can be somewhat generalized. Or more specifically, let's say EK is, um, is, is, is just some kind of a basic sequence in E equivalent to the canonical basis of C0. So here we don't require that EK must be a basis, we just require it to be a basic sequence. Then if you look at the moduli of the images in the free body classes uh, for P between for P finite, uh, then we obtain an L2 basis and when P is infinity, then we get back a C0 basis. Uh, uh, so actually the L2 basis is, is pretty much the smallest um, that we can get in the following sense. So let's suppose EK is, well, there should be an inclusion sign here. EK is a semi-normalized basis in E. Uh, uh, then um, uh, if you look at the sequence of images, then you'll get a, a moduli of the images rather in, in the three Banach lattices then we get some sequence which dominates the canonical L2 basis. Uh, and it turns out that uh, uh, there are not that many ways to obtain uh, the canonical L2 basis as uh, a sequence of moduli of images of something. Uh, so more specifically, we have this theorem that let's say K is, a, is an unconditional basis in some E, P, P finite. Then if you look at the, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the images of the sequence EK, take the moduli in the free Banach lattice, then uh, 
this, this sequence will be equivalent to the, to the L2 basis if and only if we started with the basis for C0. So nothing but the C0 basis will uh, generate the L2 basis in this manner. Uh, uh, now, what happens if EK is, uh, what happens if EK is not the basis in E, but just the basic sequence? Well, in this situation, uh, it turns out that there are other ways of obtaining L2. So uh, uh, let's say we have a sequence in the C of K space, which is equivalent to the canonical L2 basis. We map it into the free Banach Lattice uh, uh, on C of K, we take the moduli, we still get a C of K base. So uh, the question I want to finish this um, uh, talk with is the following. So let's say we have a basis uh, in EI in E, uh, and we look at the moduli uh, in of this basis in the free banner classes. Well, can we get an LQ basis from, from something? So this is this is an open question. Uh, now, uh, I think before the beginning of the talk, uh, one, uh, 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 Niels, uh, you suggested that, well, the, um, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, initials of the authors of this paper were T-O-T-T, so you are uh, Deciphered as a totally over the top talk. So I hope it was not totally over the top, but in any event, I'll stop here and I think there will be coffee break. I hope. So <laughs> this is uh, this is what is illustrated by this picture.